Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sesso here because a video here today bringing guys a Photoshop slash After Effects tutorial and I create you very uncool and clean. We'll go with like cool, like clean, clean, like alert box. There we go. Um, it's an updated version of last tutorial. So by the way, we're gonna teach you guys how to do actual more higher quality resolution for your alerts and stuff like that using WebM format rather than using like a GIF format, which was kind of weird that we did the last time, but we learned and you guys helped me very, very much. So I appreciate that very much. We're also gonna be doing that in today's video. Um, Today's video, once again, is sponsored by AE Juice. They are the freaking beasts of After Effects. I love them so very much. They're basically an After Effects program that, uh, a plugin, I would say, that has like literally already completed like effects, like UI effects, text effects, liquify effects, like transitions. They're super, super dope, super nice. And the coolest part is right now, if you guys check the description down below, there is a free starter pack for you guys to download. It's always, of course, on the site itself. I'll put the site, the link for the starter pack as well. They guys can download right now and get it for free. It's super, super dope. If I just go ahead and go to After Effects, we're gonna go to Windows. It's under Pack Manager 3 is how you guys access the pack itself. It'll load really quickly. I think the first time is a little bit longer, by the way, just so you guys know. Uh, here's a starter pack, right? I can scroll down. Look at this stuff like right here. You can use this stuff to like pop in some cool little animation, or even if you want to use this for a simple little pop in, put your Twitter afterwards kind of thing. They have text effects like right over here, text animations, right? And have the cool like motion stuff. Like, look at this. I said this last time. There's no way you don't see some kind of like starting soon like effect that's going on that you guys will super, super love. They update very, very much. They do this really cool thing when it comes to like keyframes. You can copy and paste keyframes, like a library of keyframe assistance. So if you guys are using After Effects super, super a lot, and if you guys use keyframes, a lot you guys get a cool little copy kind of how would you say a preset management of how you want to separate your a and b transition to like your easy ease stuff like that if you don't know what i said if you do know what i said you got it if you don't know it's all good with that being said guys hope you guys enjoyed this video here today so like on the video you can see it down below as always which will most likely be the ai file maybe but if not or maybe like the uh, actual like webm file so you guys can actually use the, the one that i made today's video that you guys can use for yourselves as well or a grading pack by the way um so yeah whatever one we'll see uh hope you guys enjoyed today's video we're gonna be starting off in after effects i mean in photoshop doing the actual effect itself the actual design itself excuse me and then moving into after effects and moving into streamlabs so hope you guys enjoy talk to you guys later so switch you out peace all right guys so we are starting off in photoshop so the first thing i'll probably end up suggesting you guys to do is make sure you guys are on your file new document size using the uh 1920 by 1080 height and your 300 resolution, I usually, I mean, 72 is fine as well. I just kind of like always kind of use 300 as a default, just in case I ever need to use print kind of thing, right? You want to go ahead and press uh, create, just like so. What I would also stress you guys to do as well is take a game that you guys mainly play. Maybe if you're like a streamer yourself, or if you're doing it for a client, maybe ask the client what main games he plays. Use the background like I have sort of like this, have like a Fortnite background, blur it out if you guys want to so it's not like super hard edges being kind of like annoying for your creative ability, but kind of having a background to kind of set boundaries to where your alert should be. That way when you guys do your very simple little square background or whatever end up design you end up doing, by the way, guys, I know there's a lot more designs you can do than more than just like this little clean one, but this leaves me open, of course, to do some more uh, stuff and like more fun kind of, I don't know, random abstract kind of design kind of uh, alerts. But for this tutorial here today, I'm gonna show you guys to do something like this. And it's very simple. So just keep in mind, uh, I guess gameplay wise, like, you know, ratios of where things are. So to do this little simple little effect here for the actual clean alerts here, all you have to do is make a new layer, Right, you can take your rectangle marquee tool, do a nice little simple rectangle marquee tool. I'll say right, right about so is a pretty good size, right? Pretty good size for the actual gameplay itself. Kind of just pops up right in the top middle, right? You're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and use right click, fill, drop down black, just like so. Press OK, right click, deselect, or Control D. Very, very simple. I, I mean, that might have been fast, but it's like they literally did nothing, okay? Uh, right click, fill, drop down, black, OK? Right click, deselect. Hella quick, promise you that. Okay, so I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press Control T to free transform. We're gonna the free transform. There's a little box right here. So you can rotate, move things around, of course. Right, you wanna right click, use the skew option here. And this skew is actually what this is right here. So if you take your right click skew option, take that first middle box that you guys see, move it towards the right just a little bit, just like so. Right, you give yourself a nice little skew. You can do as much skew as you guys want. You can be like super aggressive with it. But if you guys are gonna do something really, really aggressive like this, I'd probably shrink the amount of size or kind of like just literally take a right to market to again and kind of like delete it, shrink a little bit more kind of thing, right? Work with your, work with like, it, that's a little bit too much, right? But for me, I would say skewing just like so, right around here is a pretty good amount, right? So now that I have this, what I like to do is I'm gonna make a duplicate of this. I'm actually gonna call this uh, icon box, though. I'll show you guys in a second why. What I'm gonna do is on this icon box, I'm gonna press Control J on my keyboard. This will make a duplicate of it. 
So now that I have a duplicate of you, you can see right here, it says copy. I'm gonna like, press control U really quickly, just for like your sake, press control U for the hue and saturation, take my lightness, move this up a little bit so you can see it's a different color, like a grayish tone. So on this copy here, I'm gonna move this towards the right a little bit. So under it, of course, you have that black layer, okay? So you wanna say to yourself, how much space do you guys want for your icon? Maybe your logo's super long, right? So you might need more space than a usual person who has like a circle icon or you know, not a text logo or something like that, right? So you say to yourself, how much space do I need for my logo? If this is the amount of space that I think you guys need for it to fit very comfortably in there, you guys would then say, okay, this is done. By the way, if you guys don't have a logo, if you guys are doing like a new follower, you can use like a like a person icon, right? If you guys are doing like a new donation, you can use like a, a dollar sign icon you can find on Google, uh, Google or make your own kind of thing, right? So keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be a logo just for the sake of just showing, like knowing you guys, just like telling you guys, right? So now that you guys have that box here, on your copy here, you hold control on the actual uh, I, uh, icon box copy. I can hide this now. So you'll see this marquee section that happens here. So if you guys go back to your icon box, go back to your rectangle marquee tool again, when you guys right click, it will give you guys the option to layer via cut. And then you guys do that. Take your movement tool. You can move it towards the right a little bit. Give it as much space as you guys want here. I kind of have that much space. So I'll do that kind of same thing here again. And now we have an icon box. And also right here, this new layer here is actually now called your name box. Okay. That's where the whole little name thing's going to go for the other people who subscribe or donate or whatever to you. So once you guys have that, I'm going to select control and click both of these layers here. Just like so. Take my opacity, throw it to 75%. Okay, I'm gonna take this icon copy from before, delete it, we don't need it. I'm gonna take my logo really quickly, make a duplicate of it, bring it into my icon box, right? Looks good right there, I'll make it a little more bigger for the sake of the box itself. Okay, so you guys can also see this little part right here. I kind of did this just because I don't want to put too much color in the logo itself or the design itself, so to quickly do that, all I ended up doing was take my icon box, make a duplicate of it, okay? See the icon box copy. I can move it towards the right a little bit. So you'll see a darker spot here. The lighter spot is actually what you want to pay attention to. Okay, so on the left hand side is how much space you want to kind of have, you know, for the color to be. So once you guys find that out, you guys can then click on the control or hold control again, click on the icon box original copy, right? Then go back to the icon box copy and press delete on your keyboard. Okay, very simple. I take my passage, throw it to 100%. You can double click on this, go to your color overlay. You can change it to whatever color you guys want, like a pink, that's pretty freaking dope. Or if you wanna be super kind of spicy with it and kind of use a, uh, a gradient overlay, you guys can do that as well. Um, so like this can be pretty freaking cool. Uh, I'm actually, I might put in the secret download, oh, cough, 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 two likes on the video equals secret down below, which mostly be the PSD or gradients, by the way, uh, below, right? Press okay, okay, right? You can do some really cool gradients like this, right? It looks pretty good. And then last but not least, what you guys will end up doing, also, what is this called? We're going to call this, like, color thing, okay? Just like so. And I'm going to go ahead, press my text layer. Then I'm going to type in what this is for. So I'm going to say new subscriber, okay? Right? Now you can see how mine is a little more split. So if you guys want to have, like, a cool VA split like I have, you can go ahead and under your characters table, which is under Windows, character, right? You can use this little VA right here. Usually it's at zero. You can see that I kind of put mine to 100% or 200. You can even do like even more, have it be split even more, have it go across the entire box itself. But basically, once you guys have this, you guys can then go ahead and hide this layer, right? I'm gonna hide this as well. And when you guys will save it, I think I did this in the next clip as well, by the way. When you guys save it, you guys will save it as PSD and you guys will be good to go. But before you guys do that, you guys will see the quick little tips as well before you actually hop in After Effects. But this is basically how you guys make that really cool, quick little box for the actual design and move on to the actual tutorial. Let's go. All right, guys, so right before you guys actually hop into After Effects, I would really quickly do two quick things. So, of course, the first that, uh, thing happens to be, so if you guys want your alerts to kind of pop in from like mid-screen, right? Kind of like pop in kind of just like, like literally from the middle, up like top middle, rather than coming like all the way up from the bottom of the screen, kind of doing some weird thing like that. Um, if that's the effect you're going for, of course, naturally keep your document size this size, 1920 by 1080p, right? Or if you guys want to kind of have it come out of like mid-screen, like I personally like to have it, I would make sure you guys use the crop tool, which is C on your keyboard, just like so, the crop tool, right? Take it, take the top, bottom, left, and right, and I would kind of move it an inch away from the actual design itself, giving you guys enough breathing room, or I guess working space as well, right? Kind of like something like this. Move the left in as well. And you guys have this nice little simple box around your original box, but also kind of having it enough space, kind of have it breathe. I would say, like I say, an inch or so. And you guys just press a check mark, just like so. And then you guys want to actually save your PSD, right? File, save as. You guys should save it as whatever you guys want. I'm going to call this tutorial two. Save. 
Okay, now what you can do, you can go to After Effects, you can go to File, Import, File, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and just open the file that I just made, Import. <laughs> It'll pop up with this little screen right here. And you guys wanna make sure you go and go to Import Kind, your composition is Retain Layer Sizes, and of course, uh, Editable Layer Style, edit, excuse me, Editable Layer Styles. And basically, if you guys have watched any of my After Effects tutorials, and we've worked in Photoshop before, simple little settings you might even have them already enabled and all that good stuff so once you guys see under your projects you'll see your file name right here you just simply double click on this composition just like so and you guys will see that this is all of your layers uh what before you actually see it you actually uh if you ever grouped anything together inside your uh psd like i ended up doing so like like this right here you see how it's grouped together if you guys do not want how i kind of have it you would ungroup this but if you guys see now that I, since I grouped it, I didn't realize that I grouped it. But since I grouped it, just in case you guys want to know, it's going to be under its own uh, composition itself. So you have to double click on it again, and that's where all your layers are going to happen to be, right? That's perfectly fine, actually. It's not too bad if you kind of have it separate like that. But if you guys have multiple different groups, I would then make sure you guys take all your layers and put them in one single group. That way you're not looking through 500 like groups and layers and compositions through After Effects where it makes it super, super freaking difficult for anyone to kind of find or end up do anything you guys, you know, want to like move something very, very simple, right? Uh, I'm going to go and delete this text. We don't need that text though. All right. I guess we're good now to actually start in After Effects. Let's get this going. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and just go through that very simple, good old AE101 and hit you guys with some really cool, simple, very basic effects in order to use for your actual uh, alerts and pretty much the only things you're going to end up doing anyway for what I think what you're going to be doing for your alerts, right? So for me personally, what I'm going to end up doing is right click on the composition settings. So right click anywhere in this gray area here, go to composition settings. And for me, I kind of have this, the width and the height is going to be basically what your box happen to be. Don't change that. You're perfectly fine. Um... But for me, under duration right here, I'm going to put mine for 10 seconds and 15 milliseconds. You guys want to press OK. And for me, I like to have my frame around 60 frames per second. I don't know what my math, but my English. But my in see? See? It, I, come on, bro. Uh, my the, 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 the frames. There we go. We got it. This is so much more easier on 60 frames per second. And I think it just looks a little more cleaner, of course, and a little more smoother. Uh, so have that as so. I'm totally going to leave that in there because I'm an idiot and we already know. So it's, there's no reason I'm hiding it. Um, okay. So I'm gonna do, what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and gonna go for the one frame per second or one second for this case, right? So you guys see right here, this is the time frame here. So that's going to be saying, hey, this is one second. So for me, I'm going to, of course, move my cursor around one second and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quickly just focus on, let me get rid of the new subscriber. Let me get rid of this. Uh, let me get rid of this for you guys and kind of get rid of the logo as well and kind of just focus on the icon box itself. So the icon box, I have everything labeled. So should you, right? Um, the icon box here, I'm going to go ahead and take this and at one frame per second or that one, uh, one second, excuse me, or 60 frames per second, right? There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and press P my keyboard while the layer is selected. That'll give me the position qu uh, quick, I guess, shortcut, you would say. If you guys don't want to do that, you can just go down the drop arrow, go down to where it says position right here. Now you guys just then copy, which is not copy, but click on that nice little stopwatch and that'll give you guys your first keyframe. So if you guys have really no idea at all what keyframes are, it's basically from point A to point B, what's going on, what like settings you change. That's just basically what it's doing. It's changing from what you had on point A to the settings that you had on point B. That's the easiest, cleanest way I can kind of explain it. Um, so now that you have your first keyframe at this position at one second, everything you do before it will now lead up to that position, which is right here, which is where you want to have it, of course, right? Because that's where everything stops and holds all that good stuff, right? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit by using this little bottom scroll bar here. <clears throat> so I'm going to say around, I would say, let's say like 35 milliseconds here. I want this to be at the position of in the middle. Okay. I want to kind of be in the middle era, right? And then before it even gets to the middle era, I'm going to go ahead and move it just a one frame to the left. You saw me just simply just take my blue arrow here or this blue little, uh, what is this called? The time indicator. Gotcha. Time indicator, move it towards the left, just one frame make another position, right? Well, this will do is kind of lock in that quick little frame right here for you guys so that it stays in a straight line. If you guys were to go ahead and do what I want to do right now, which is go to the beginning and hide this. So I'm going to take this and move this down just like so. Okay. You see how it's a nice, it's a nice straight line. Now it's a nice straight come up, come down. If I were to get rid of this really quickly, you guys will see it's curved. So it's kind of, it's kind of like going to mix it or mix it all together or mush it all together from getting from point A to point B. It's going to give you this really weird arc. But since we put that keyframe with the same as that position, it says, hey, go from here to here. Then that one simple frame is going to help us say, hey, now you go from here to here, making sure it's a straight line. So that's what I personally want to go ahead and make sure you guys understand is we want to go for that nice little simple, uh, like kind of like an arc, right? Also, 
when I move this down for, right, for this keyframe right here uh, in the beginning, I, I held shift by the way. So the same thing, click on it, hold shift, move down. That'll make sure you guys bring it right in the middle uh, or, or right perfectly down, straight down the middle and you're good to go, right? So now what's gonna happen here is during that one second, you're gonna see this nice little simple little kind of left kind of uh, L motion going on, right? So now, easy ease. If you guys have no idea what easy ease is, it's kind of how you see in my example, whatever, right? How, excuse me, excuse me again, uh, point A to point B kind of has this weird sort of like, how would you call it? Like a reaction to how fast you want things to be completed or end up slowing down, then get it faster kind of thing, right? How you want the point A to point B to be, I guess, executed. Okay, so for instance, this first little sort of like coming up here, right? This first right here, this first little simple going to the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this keyframe and take this keyframe. The way I can select both of them, by the way, is I can hold shift and also uh, allow me to select both of them. Then you wanna right click, keyframe assistance, easy ease. This will turn your actual keyframes into little hourglasses now. And what you can do over here, this far right little option right here is called the graph editor. You can select that. Now, if you want your graph to look exactly like mine, I believe in your graph editor, mostly everything, if you're on your default, which is I believe edit value graph, it's the same exact thing, but the way I like to see it personally is editing speed graph. So keep that in mind. If you guys, yours is going to be default like this. Okay. I would default it personally like this for me is kind of how I like it to see it. It's a personal preference in a little bit of a way. Um, but it's does the same as like effect. So don't worry about it. Okay. So what I like to do, you see your two keyframes that you selected will now be inside this graph here. So you can see it's indicated by this little uh, white line here, white line or white dot here, white dot here, and these little uh, yellow lines as well, the anchor points or the, uh, how do you say the, um, holy crap, I keep forgetting handles. Okay. So with these handles here, I can just take this and say, if I move this towards the left, you'll notice right you'll notice that it doesn't actually end up getting towards the middle until the very very end a little bit and then it quickly kind of snaps in the middle uh in the middle at the end uh in the middle <laughs> okay so i'm gonna show you guys the opposite way if i move this one toward it here in the inside you'll see that it gets really close to the middle really fast and then slows down towards the end so in a way, right? If you guys move this towards the, uh, towards the right or away from the point itself, it's gonna slow down the amount of time it takes for you to get from, I guess you would say from here to here, but then really quickly get to that spot where you guys wanna happen to be at the end. So I don't know if I'm explaining this the best way possible, but what I personally like to just simply do is just move this one towards the left, towards the right a little bit, right? And then move this one towards the left a little bit kind of thing, right? It'll give you guys a more, uh, I guess, uh, how do you say, exaggerated or a less very stagnant movement, but a more kind of exaggerated, fun, and energetic movement. So what I'm going to do here is go to the uh, right-hand side, right? Right-click, keyframe assistance, and do this last part here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this one. I want to say, hey, I want this to be pretty fast in the beginning, and I kind of slow down towards the end. So I'm going to move this far right one towards the left a little bit more, right? So you'll see, boom, boom, right? Kind of like that. I kind of like that. Uh, I want it to be a little bit faster actually. So I kind of want to bring this in quickly, right? Let's see. Yeah, I think I like that. I think I'm a fan. I think I'm a fan. I think the beginning itself as well, these keyframes right here in the beginning can be a little bit faster as well. I don't know if to do that. There we go. Or that's slower. I would say faster is this way. Here we go. Let's see. I think that's pretty okay. Like, I'm, I don't hate it or whatever, and for the tutorial purposes itself, without having to go through, like, the millions of amount of changes that your brain would like to go for and kind of figure out, I'm going to go for sake of the video here today. I like this way better. It's going to be better, of course, than the original sort of stagnant movement regardless, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I want to add a little bit of rotation, a little bit more fun as well. So right around here, <clears throat> I'm going to go to the end again. <clears throat> And I'm gonna go ahead and turn in 3D. So this 3D layer here, this little box right here, indicates a 3D layer, so that way I can actually turn things on X, Y, and Z axis as well, rather than just kind of like rotating it on a very simple 2D plane. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this box here, just like so, this is the th turning on the 3D, and you'll see X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation. If you guys want to, what I personally like to do anyway, just in case I ever end up changing anything, right? I like to just keyframe every single one of these, which is the X, Y, and the Z for me. Right, now you have the keyframes at that one second, because of course at that one second, you want that to be stopped and stagnant and stay there forever now for the alert to kind of finish off, right? So I'm gonna go over here to the beginning again, and I'm gonna go ahead and take my X and just kind of figure out where this is rotating. Okay, so this is gonna rotate sort of like facing this way, right? As you guys see that kind of like thing right there. 
this Y rotation is gonna actually rotate it more like this, which is kind of what I want. And the Z rotation is gonna rotate it on like a 2D plane, which I do not want. So the Y rotation is what I'm be actually gonna be doing. So at this uh, very beginning of the frames, I can take my Y rotation, the second one here. Um, what I personally like to do as well, actually, so this, the zero X plus one point, uh, 0, 0. Moving this gives you all the way to the ratio of 360, I believe it is. Of course, 360 being one full rotation. So if you guys take a really quick wild guess, that zero in the beginning, that says zero X right here, right? Is actually telling you how many uh, rotations, full rotations that you guys want. So what I like to do is just simply just click on this, right? And just make it one, make it even, make it simple. And just kind of like, go ahead and just go with that now. So if I play it, you'll see it does this nice little sort of spin now right okay now we're now we're thinking bro I, I like the spin so of course with any keyframes that you guys add you can add easy ease so you want to click on those two keyframes for the y rotation you'll see it really quickly right i want to ch check that right you'll see i can highlight the y rotations keyframes go to the keyframe assistance go to easy ease graph editor take these points here and i'm gonna say i want it to go super slow and then just like freaking like super quick right all right yikes okay we're not not that fast let's go for a little <laughs> a little less aggressive bro um let's go with like maybe this is a little bit better i mean that's pretty that's pretty fast like i don't i can literally sit here all day but i do not want to do that for the sake of the video i'm going to say maybe this is going to be good okay that's way better a little more like less hectic ah i like that okay so now we have our nice little, simple full rotation going through while going towards the middle while going towards the left and now we're set with that little simple icon bar, which is really dope. Now we can move on to the actual name box. Um, so I'll do that now, okay? Let's go ahead and sync this down. Uh, this left color thing here, what actually we'll do actually really quickly is also, you'll end up seeing me press one button a lot to view my keyframes. If you guys wanna do the same exact thing, it's you on your keyboard, right? That'll show you every single keyframe in that layer and only show you the things that are activated in your keyframes when you press U, that shows them, okay? Just making sure you guys know. So you guys will see if you have keyframes on it, you press U and it doesn't, right? So I'm gonna end up doing it for this left little bar here at one second, it needs to stay here. So I'm gonna press P on my keyboard for position, make sure it stays there. And at the beginning or right around, I would say right around here, uh, around like 40 seconds or so or 40 milliseconds, I'm gonna take the position, keyframe it again, but move this just simply outside the canvas. So it's gonna stay outside the canvas the entire time until uh, 40 milliseconds, then it'll start moving in, and then at that nice little simple one second point, it'll just kind of stop right there, which is kind of how I like to have it. I'm gonna, of course, easy ease this again, and kind of just have it do something like this, just like so, right? Cool. Now we're cooking. All right, cool. Now we're uh, now our icon box is done, and then we're kind of set with that. So, name box here, we're gonna do the same exact thing, kind of follow the same exact rule. So I'm gonna uncheck or unhide this really quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and open up these keyframes really quick so I can make sure I go to that one second again. I'm gonna go to the name box. I'm gonna move my name box right around here. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be moved, um, but for the sake of just kind of like keeping it in mind, I'm just gonna keep it around here, right? So name box. I want this to be out of frame, basically the entire time. Okay. I want this to come in frame, maybe 10 frames or 10 milliseconds after the uh, the the icon box finishes, right? So I'm gonna go up 10 frames, which is about 10 middles, uh, milliseconds in that 60 frame per second ratio. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go to position for my name box. Click in on the uh, click on the position right here. This is pretty much what you always want to do. Is you always want to put your position where you want to have it at the end, or you want to start off basically at the end, right? So you want to go to where you want to kind of have it be stuck and stopped. You all right? You keyframe that first, and then you guys can go ahead and move around. Let's see around here, right to the beginning, and move this baby out of the frame. So all this is gonna happen. Blah, 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 blah. This is going to connect now right around here. Then this position box is going to, or the, the, excuse me, the, um, the name box is going to come in, swoop in like a superhero and say, all right, I'm here, bro. Like the party is now done. Okay. I'm going to move this around 10 seconds, a little bit, uh, 10 frames, a little more ahead. I think it's a little bit too fast. Something like that. Okay. I like that. Okay. So you see how like weird and stagnant, like look how nice and pretty and, and elegant this sort of motion looks. And all of a sudden the name box just comes in like, bro. Okay. So. Of course, you probably guessed it. It's easy ease. So we got to fix. Right click on these. Easy ease. Graph editor. Take these points. Move this in a little bit. Oops. Move this in a little bit with the handles, just like so. Kind of make it look a little more prettier. Yeah, there we go. A little, a little more, a little more finesse to it. Okay, I'm down for that. So now that I kind of have that, I'll go ahead and do this little sort of last parts here, or I guess the last part itself almost, um, or the logo as well too. So the logo, I'm just gonna, I can simply just do something like right before it connects, 
on this logo here what i like to personally do is my for myself is kind of have it is kind of use a, a linear uh wipe transition so to quickly just do that right before this connects i'm gonna go about 10 frames right before it finishes so that one uh that one this is one second right this is 50 milliseconds i want to have right around that 50 millisecond part go to effect transitions so this little logo here can be like i said before you're like it can be like a person icon to represent not new subscriber but new follower a money icon to represent a new donation something like that right um i'm gonna use right under transition i believe it's called like i said linear wipe here it is linear wipe you can just change your wipe angle to like 246 it's basically the wipe angle itself the direction that you guys see this little uh, stick is is where the wipe is going to be like kind of like orientation where it's going to be coming from okay so completion what it means here is if i were to go ahead and just keyframe this completion right here right now that 10 for, uh 10 seconds before that completion of that one second of the icon box i'm going to take this from zero and put this at 100 to start off with right this is going to be like hey the completion is now done right 100 percent. basically it's gone right the whatever it uh the transition is over for me it's a logo is at 100 percent, meaning it's done so that thing is gone basically so i'm gonna go one second now and put this at zero saying hey it's now appeared okay so right once you're gonna see boom logo appears name box comes in now we're looking super fresh so you can start to see it's very very fun very nitpicky as well sometimes a little tedious you would say but this is the whole point of motion design kind of thing right and i'm not no freaking pro or anything like that but i mean it's kind of fun and i know like some boundaries or some basics right i know i'm not pro trust trust me we know this um but i'm having fun with it right there we go nice little sort of like motion there I would even say this name box is a little bit i think it's actually taking a little bit too long now to come in i'm pressing my keyboard to bring up my name box transitions i move it about five seconds or five milliseconds a little earlier i mean i don't know right you can mess around with speed the entire time you might like you might not like how just something kind of like looks excuse me and that's perfectly fine that just means you have a little bit of a brain you got a little bit of thinking going that's perfectly fine okay so i guess last part now is actually doing the new subscriber thing so you guys won't be able to see it but if I just like turn this, uh, you guys won't see it because I'm in a composition that doesn't allow you to see it. Um, I guess for the sake of the tour, I'm going to put really quickly make a solid, a black solid and put this below so you guys can see the word new subscriber. So that way it's not like it's in your head that it's actually there really quickly. I'm going to get rid of this black box. Don't worry about it. Um, I just put a new solid right under it so you can see at least what's happening. So for me, <laughs> by the way, remember our, our boxes themselves are black and also a lower opacity. So you're not going to be able to see the boxes as well. Keep that in mind. They're still there see right showing you guys okay so one second name box comes in you guys can't see that but name box comes in i want while my name box is coming in i want this to kind of do a linear wipe as well to reveal the letters that are coming in right here so right around here is where the box is kind of coming in right it's right right now is where those boxes where the box is at the start right here is where the letters are and i want this kind of follow through as well with it so the word new subscriber here i'm gonna go ahead and go to effects transition linear wipe just like so in my direction i'm going to keep it at plus that plus 90 because right here you see how like the line saying it's going this way which is going that way we want to go that way right so of course i'm gonna keyframe this right here at the start i want this to be at 100 i'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this really quickly i'm gonna see where it should be about complete which is around here right and now it's now past the letters okay so now i'm gonna put this oops, that was weird uh oops i didn't actually keyframe this correctly i want this to be at 100 percent, not 99 100 percent Let's go back and turn this off to see where the box is, where it completes going through. Right around here is perfectly fine. Take this, now throw it at zero. So you'll see, here we go, zero. <clears throat> you'll see that while the box is kind of going, I don't know if you can see, maybe if I zoom in a little bit, you kind of see these little really awkward blurry letters. You'll see that while this is going through, the letters are now actually appearing as well. So hopefully you can see kind of how that's happening, right? The letters are kind of appearing while the box is going through, right? Okay, so now that we have that, we can then go ahead and say we are pretty much done with the basic little for uh i guess tutorial of this part right here right before we throw it into Streamlabs and trying to show you guys really quickly how to do that part um but yeah i'm also going to spice this up a little bit with ae juice bro because we can do that um like i said i i have a lot of fun with ae juice like i'm this is my returning sponsor that means the reaction we got last time was really good for them is also as well as for us so honestly i appreciate them so very much for coming in i'm gonna go ahead and quickly go ahead and just kind of do some little fun stuff with it and uh yeah let's just see how it works all right guys so i'm gonna go ahead and use actually one of my favorite things to use in the ae juice pack so also by the way in the description down below should be the starter pack as well so 
I have a lot of the like the cooler stuff, I guess you would say, that you guys got to pay money for. Um, but with that being said, the starter pack is super, super. This literally starter pack. If you guys are just looking for fun little stuff like this, it's pretty much all you would need, of course. Um, but you guys, of course, give it a shot and look up some really cool other stuff. If you guys want to open it, by the way, it's under your Windows Pack Manager 3. Also, like I said before, the starter pack is in the description down below if you guys want to go ahead and download it. Um, so I'm going to be using Liquid Transitions. Uh, what is this? Liquid Transition 2 or 3? Liquid Transitions, period, is what it's called. Okay. Uh, Liquid Elements. There we go. Not Transitions. Sorry. I'm going to go to my favorites here, actually, under this pack. I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here. So the cool thing about this, so you can literally just literally click on it itself and press import or double click on it. It'll just import exactly under your, where your time, um, how do you say your time indicator is. So if you guys want to move this up a little bit, I kind of want to, this, this explosion here, I want to put right before my logo starts to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click right here. Okay. It'll import it. So I'm going to really quickly exit this out. Also, really cool thing. If you guys want to, like, maybe let's say you're working with, like, pixel art or you're working with, like, a different theme and this, this kind of, like, smooth theme doesn't work for you, you can literally click on this cogwheel right here, bro, and you can see different themes. Like, you can have drop shadows, glows, splatters, rough edges, pixel. Pixel? Are you kidding me? Um, I don't know what that even means. Oh, kind of, like, a little more, more motion kind of going on here. Texture. Like, yikes. Yikes. Bro. Yikes. That's all I got to say. It's freaking dope. Okay? So... I'm going to go ahead and kind of go scroll through a little bit. So you see it's actually pretty big. So the way I'm going to end up actually scaling it down is just simply clicking on the explosion, pressing S on my keyboard. That brings up the scale tool or the scale shortcut. Take it from 100, just move it down. While you're scaling it down, you can just simply, while you have this little tool right here, the selection tool selected, you can move this just like so. Right, I want to move it a little bit more bigger. Let's go to the beginning as well of it. Like when it starts to come up, I want to kind of have it right below right below here, right below this box, right? So it kind of says, boom, it's a little too early. I'm gonna move this a little more forward, right? Right when that logo starts to pop up, I want this to be like, boom, logo's here. Look at me, kind of thing, right? Like, here we go, boom. I'm gonna put the black on so you can see kind of how it's working. Oop, that didn't render out right. There we go, right? Yeah, I like that, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right there. Let's say, boom, logo comes in. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna do this little, little kind of little cool thing for this. I'm actually, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my composition settings. I'm gonna have my width just a little bit more open so I can kind of see my white a little bit more. I'm a little bit more as well. Composition settings, width, a little bit more, just like so. Right, because if your composition can't see it, that means the other people and the render itself cannot see it. So I would even say, I'll probably even move the height a little bit more as well, right? Now we can see a little bit more of the actual effect itself. So when I, when you, of course, render it out, you want it to be as, um, or you want to see as much as possible. So I'm sorry, you have, of course, edit it. It's perfectly fine and very, very quick to do so as well. Um, okay, so right here at the end, I want to import another thing. I'm going to go ahead and go to, where is it? Um, Windows, Pack Manager. It's one of my favorites again, right? Okay, just like so. And I'm gonna do this one, the flames one, okay? Double click on it to import it, just like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and say right here, where's the flame start at? Okay, so this needs to be like way more pushed in, okay, to kind of like speed that up. Of course, scale it down, pressing S on your keyboard, scaling it like so. And right around here, I wanna kind of have this little, mm, this is too soon, right? Like here. A little too early kind of does this little sort of like like boom it stopped like see me like kind of thing right all right let's see uh the black is probably not the best color what color would be like better to like actually see let's try a different solid really quickly like a solid let's just kind of use like a like some a little more lighter something like this maybe put this below everything right okay let's see boom Ooh. okay right it's like explosion for the logo itself. Then this little sort of thing right here kind of like follows through with the actual rectangle. It's kind of like has this little halt kind of effect. I like that. We're definitely, I definitely like that a lot actually. That looks really, really good. Also what that means by the way, this starting section right here, this is to be a little more further down, right? Make sure you guys fix that. If you guys ever move the actual composition, make sure you guys move the actual stuff in the starting positions out of the frame entirely, okay? Yes. Yes, brother. Yes. 
I definitely like that. You can see how this works now as well. A little text effect right there, right? Okay, bros, I actually like that. And as a matter of fact, I think this pack itself actually has text things you can do. So you don't even have to do like a really basic, boring little uh, thingamajigger. What I call that, the, the linear transition. I believe the starter pack has text animations where you can make the text kind of like come in in like really freaking cool ways. Yeah, bro. Oh, dude. Y'all gonna have a lot of fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I want to keep it like a lot of exploration, uh, exploration for you guys, but I don't know. You guys will freaking love this. Make sure you guys download it in the uh, description down below. Um, I'm happy with this, right? I think I am. I, I keep playing it because I'm trying to put more things or kind of like figure things out. It's a tutorial. I don't waste too much of your time. I like this how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and render this out. And the way I'm gonna actually render this out is going to composition, add to render queue. Now, this little section, by the way, coming up is more important because this, this rendering is actually better than what I did previously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to best settings, keep this at best, uh, best settings, use your composition frame rate, you press okay, right? And then for your output module, if you guys have AVI, that's perfectly fine, but I like to, or excuse me, if you guys do not have QuickTime, you can use AVI, that's perfectly fine, but I'm gonna use QuickTime. Same thing with AVI, under your channels here, it's RGB. You guys want to change it to RGB plus alpha, which will make sure you guys indicate that your actual background, your transparent background, which I just realized if I press OK really quick. Uh, we want make sure you have RGB plus alpha, right? Make sure your background is transparent for this. <laughs> uh, oops, let's delete that. Boom. Okay. Right. So that'll make sure your the plus alpha part makes sure makes sure that your actual background is transparent. And if you guys want to see if it's actually transparent or not, you can press toggle transparency grid, and that'll show you guys what's transparent or not. Uh, just so you guys can see, right? And then for your output module, just simply just, just drop this down. You can output this to where you guys want to have it. I'm just going to have it called, um, and uh, what is this called? Uh, sub alert period. Just like so save, right? And you guys press render and it shouldn't take too long whatsoever. You guys are in that 10 second mark. It'd probably take like, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. And uh, once you guys are done with this, we'll then hop it into simple little stream labs and show you guys from there. Okay. All right, guys. So once it's done rendering all that good stuff, whether you guys uploaded it in uh, or excuse me, rendered it in AVI or .mov, you guys want to make sure now you guys go to this site right here, Convertio.co. Not this is not a sponsor, by the way. This is just something I found from you guys in the comment section of my last video of doing this that you guys are saying WebM is a better format than GIF and it's also or higher quality than GIF and it's also just as low um, file size as well. So I want to quickly go to from computer. I'm going to quickly go to where it should be. It should say uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. it's under documents for me and then mine is called sub alert dot uh, mov right open okay you want to select where it says gif you want to click where it says image you want to click where it says webm you select that you press convert it's going to start uploading and after it's done uploading you're going to have the options now download it so like i said before you guys were saying dot uh or web WebM, excuse me, was a better format, way higher quality, and all that good stuff. So I would now suggest you guys start doing this, not using a GIF. I mean, even that whole entire probably like sequence where you're like annoying for you guys from last video. Um, this is better, way easier, and you know, thank you to the people in the comment section who commented and showed me how to do this before last time. So I can now press download, and this is also free. This is my third time downloading it now, so this is, is definitely free. We're good. So you can at least do it three times so far. I mean, I don't want some random like freaking pop up stuff to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Good stuff. So. Uh, when you guys are on Streamlabs now, you guys can go ahead and go to your widgets here, go to alert box, and this is guys how you get to your, of course, your alert boxes. So really quickly, I like to add, uh, if you guys want to just launch this for you guys, but remember when you guys actually launch this, the background is black. So if you guys actually had a different color, it might work. Um, or a different kind of like style of, a, of an alert box like before but if you launch this and it's black of course you guys remember the actual thing we made before is just a black background with a little opacity so you can see what's below it um so i'm gonna end up doing for you guys i'm gonna do this right and i have an obs up so if i were to go ahead and just press test member which i'll show you guys right now right you can see this is i kind of i started started a little bit just kind of make sure it was working all that good stuff it is but you can see i can see my alert and my test i'll just realize probably like turn off the fact that you guys can hear that um right here right you guys will see that you can actually see what it looks like right that's a good thing that's a good sign all that good stuff so i would if you guys want to, you can open up obs and test it that way just so you guys know okay so what i want to do is i want to go ahead and make sure you guys set this up right so i'm going to be doing testing member for this example here so i'm going to go under where it says general settings to the right i want to go where it says member so if you guys were to do the actual alert box for subscriber or donation you would of course go under donations or subscribers simple right okay so by default your layer is picture and then under it is a text you guys want to make sure the default now for you guys is picture 
uh, and above is the text. So that's gonna make sure you guys have your text, of, of course, above or in front of the actual um, file that you guys just downloaded, right? So in the middle ones, we wanna select that one. And then you guys wanna make sure, you guys need to change your name template here. So name has just became a subscriber um, or a sponsor. We can just have it just be literally the name, which is pretty good. So I can erase that template, but if you didn't have anything on the top of your, remember that alert bar that we just made in Photoshop? If you didn't have where it says new subscriber, you can keep where it says like name and then new subscriber kind of thing. But I think you actually have to keep the brackets name, by the way, you can't delete everything. So this is what you can have and you're good to go. So text animation, I believe the default's like none. I like wiggle, bounce is pretty cool, pulse is pretty neat. I'm not gonna put it on pulse for this one. You can see the examples right here, right? I don't know, rubber bands, kind of a little, little weird. I think it's a little, a little too much, but I think pulse is a really good sort of like seamless kind of one that kind of has also a little bit of animation to it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to where it says change media here. I'm gonna go where it says uh, drop uh, and upload some stuff, just like so, right? And I'm gonna upload, it's your downloaded uh, new WebM file, by the way, it should be under your downloads, I believe. Downloads, I'm gonna go to where it says subalert. I'm gonna click on subalert.webm, press open, right? Once it opens, I can then select the WebM file, press select again, right? And then what's gonna happen here is, if I just save this really quickly, save settings, this should be the newer settings, not the ones that you saw before. Test member, right, you'll see, it just says Sessa, right? And the whole little effect happened. Ooh, that looked, actually looked pretty good. Look at that, boom, boom. That looks really nice. I'm down with that. Okay, so first things first, I'll probably have to make the text delay. I think the text delay was okay, right? Yeah, the text delay was actually pretty good. So one second for me, so we did 10 seconds, and we of course made the uh, the completion be one second. Uh, the text delay at one second actually makes a little more sense, right? So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up font settings here, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the Aldric font. I just, I'm gonna keep using that. Uh, if you guys just type in A, L D R I C H, you'll get the font name. I believe it's default font by the way as well. Um, font size, I'm not gonna make this a little more bigger. I'm gonna make it like 34, save the settings and test it again. So there's gonna be a lot of testing going on. Test member, <laughs> uh, and that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and do it a little bit more, like 38, save settings, scroll up again, test member. Okay, I'm not opposed to that. I think that's pretty good. So what I'm learning right now is for you guys as well is the fact that you guys should also know how to do the whole margin thing. So as you guys saw in my example here, my test member one more time, you'll see that my text is a little bit towards the, uh, the left-hand side, but I wanna move it more towards the right-hand side. So what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm gonna go to where it says enable custom HTML and CSS, press enable, and I'm gonna go under CSS and I'm gonna scroll down to where it is, says 30 right here. So right on line 30, I'm gonna make sure I give you guys a really quick little setting. I'll put it in the description down below for you guys as well. I believe it's called like margin, colon, left, something, whatever. I think I have it saved in my thingy. Do I have it saved in my thing? I do not. All right, so I really quickly went ahead and make sure I copied the same exact thing that I needed for the whole margin thing. So once again, if I, I kind of quickly forgot my train of thoughts, I'm gonna test, I'm gonna make sure I test it again. So if I just see this really quickly, it says, uh, Sesso, the see how the Sesso is not really quick, quite in the middle. I can go ahead and move it more towards the left and right hand side just by doing this. Okay, this is where we left off. Um, under line 30 of your CSS here, if you click on line 30 right at the end of it and then press space, it'll make a new, uh, new line. So now you're on line 31. I can now press control V and show you guys what I have. So what you guys what, what type in is margin hyphen left uh, colon uh, space 11% or I'm gonna start off 11%. Uh, and then you want to put a, what is that, a semicolon? I don't know what that one is. I, yo, English class, sorry. Um, oh, once you guys have that, right? Then you can press save, okay? I'm gonna go ahead now and test it again. Test member, so you should see this be moved more towards the right-hand side. So it can be move, moved even more. So I can go to 30, 30, 31 again, line 31. I'm gonna go to like 19 or so. Let's try 19, let's try to save those settings. Let's try to scroll up, test member again. Uh, test member. Okay, see how 19 is now directly right in the middle? That is what we wanna have. So I think for now, this is definitely pretty good. You can see at the end of this animation, by the way, you'll see something really quickly, how it does it again. To not have that do that, that's because of my alert uh, my alert duration is at 11 seconds. We have on our uh, After Effects, I believe it was 10 seconds, right? So I'm actually gonna put this at nine seconds, one second below it. Now, if you guys wanted to in your After Effects, by the way, what I would suggest you guys to do, if you, I don't know why I didn't do this in the actual tutorial portion, but when you guys are in this document size here, 
right? If you guys want to pre-compose all this and then have everything at the end, just like kind of scroll up out of the out of the way, you guys can do that as well. What I mean by that is if you guys were to like pre-compose all this stuff in this layer that you guys did for the animation, right? You pre-compose it just like so, right? You press OK. Then at this position, like right near the end, you can have a position, keyframe it at the end, right of that 10 seconds that's not the end of the 10 seconds but right here right at the end of the 10 seconds you keyframe it like like fifth like 15 frames or so before the end and at the end you then keyframe it going out of the canvas right so it'll just go like out right you can do that as well by the way just so you guys know right i'm gonna go back into my alert and i'm gonna open up obs again okay so now if i just really quickly since i didn't do that i put it at nine seconds so what i'll show you guys now if i press test member Right, the text will be in the middle here. And then it'll of course go for nine seconds. When nine seconds goes away, it'll kind of just fade away, and then the next one can also start regoing. So it won't do it again. So you can see that now, none of that kind of crazy stuff. So I believe I'm gonna go ahead and say we're pretty much done, and that is the tutorial for you guys. And uh, yeah, bro, I'm I'm happy with this. I'm more satisfied for this. Excuse me, I keep hiccuping. I was hiccuping and like doing this weird burps for like the entire day today. This weird thing, bro. I have no idea. Um. But I want to say thank you guys so very much for watching this video once again. Uh, I personally like the clean version a lot more better myself. I'm happy to show you guys a new little render setting so I get more cleaner alerts. Even that video from before that we did like a couple months ago now is still really picking up views, still really picking up the comments, really helping us all together. We're not really great great at alert, uh, alerts and stuff like that, but there's no one really out there that's kind of teaching them. So I'm kind of hopefully can move on and kind of push you guys to kind of move in that direction as well to up your value, up that kind of scale. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys later. Cecil HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. And if you guys know what I'm about to say in the next two seconds, MLG Anaheim, that's where I'm going right now. That's why there's a lot of clothes and just random stuff. Sorry for this. I'm um, packing. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And thank you guys so very much to AE Juice over there for uh, sponsoring the video. You guys are awesome. And uh, the product is super awesome. Make sure you guys check them out in the description down below as well. One more time. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Later. Love. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>